Oh, well, one of the tools I use quite a lot is a trapping plane. Here it is. Some people call it a witchet, others call it a stale engine. I've always known them as trapping planes. And they used to be used by fishing rod makers for making long fishing rods. I use them, as you'll see, in the Windsor chair spindle making video. Use them quite a lot for making the spindles and Windsor chairs. They're also jolly good for making chair, long chair legs, like on ladder back chairs. And I thought it'd be good fun to actually just run through how I made this one. I made it about 30 years ago. And I did at the time write some notes down in the book. So I have actually scanned some of the pages in for posterity and I'll, I'll run through how I made it. What I had to do was actually first of all build a furnace. Now I didn't know much about metalworking at that point in time so I went down to some evening classes down in London down the commercial road at Poplar and there's a chap there who showed me all about sand casting and also how to work a metal lathe which is great fun. And so what I did first of all, I built my own furnace and to do that I popped along to the local chip shop and got an oil drum, one of the cooking oil drums, a five gallon drum. And also I said while I was buying my chips, could I have a can for the gherkins please? And so I got another smaller metal can that had been used to hold gherkins. And I actually used the, the large five gallon can to make the out, outer casing of my furnace and the gherkin can to make the inner liner. And between those two layers, I packed lots of far brick that I got from a builder's merchant. And I'll show you a diagram and a picture to see how it works. But essentially, that made me a furnace into the side of which I put a huge propane burner. So it's a roofer's propane burner to get a good bit of heat in. And I used a graphite crucible that I bought down in Hatton Garden where they had all the diamond dealers and got an A6 graphite crucible and some aluminium from the local scrapyard mm. and loaded up the crucible and got it melting with the, the big blowtorch in the side of the furnace. But having built the furnace I had a means of melting the aluminium metal which is great. I mean I wouldn't suggest you try and do this today in the same sort of way that I did it because it's probably not very safe but there are more modern furnaces around or you could take your pattern to a foundry. Anyway having made the furnace my next job then was to actually make the pattern, the mould for the tool. And to do that, this, so this will be the sort of aluminium body of the tool. To do that, I made a wooden mould of exactly the same shape as the trapping plane. And I've got the mould here. So this is the mould that I made. And um, it's an exact wooden copy of the trapping plane. And perhaps you can see it without the board there, visualise you've got your plane top part and lower part there. These two big items here are called sprues and they really just facilitate the pouring of the metal. So once you've got your molten metal you actually pour the metal into a sand mold. So the purpose of the pattern is to make the impression in the sand for the casting. This one has to use special foundry sand and it's quite sticky clay type sand. I use Mansfield Red um, but any casting type sand, the sand that sticks together, is used for the mould. And what you have is a moulding box. comes with two halves. Here they both are. And you sandwich your pattern into the mould. So that's one half, and you put the other half of the moulding box on top. So that would go on top there. And the idea is you ram all the sand into each half of the moulding box, pack it down really tight, ramming it all around your pattern, do that for both halves and then you very delicately, and this is where you do need to have a very steady hand, you actually remove the two halves of the box so that you can get your pattern out and um, you, you really do need to keep a steady hand on this one. There's one jolt and you ruin your pattern. But the, the idea is you, you're then left with an impression of the pattern in the sand. And what you can then do is pour, you put the two halves of the pattern, of, sorry, of the sand boxes back together and you pour the molten metal into the hole that's been left by the pattern. And the idea is then you get a perfect casting. Well, I did this 
and it, it didn't work first time. I had a bit of a disaster actually and the reason for that is that my sand was too wet. So steam formed within the mould and it sort of blew the metal around a bit. I also hadn't, before I poured the metal you should actually scoop off any what they call dross. It's basically rubbish that floats on top of the metal and I hadn't removed that and it got caught in the mould as well and you can see from the picture it was a, an absolute disaster <laughs> but um, I learned as you go with these things and the next time I had a go I actually got a perfect moulding and that's the one I used to make this plane so it was, it was great success and then the second time round I was quite pleased with that actually and of course once you've got the mould you can make lots of planes so it's very easy then just to keep turning them out.